WPGET Web Dev Tutorials for All User Levels. All right, so today I just wanted to look at uh, background images on elements or sections um, and three different ways of doing it and what you guys think about these three different ways and where they should be used, where they shouldn't be used. Um, I've got my own preferences, which I'll talk about and the reasons. Uh, and what I've got here is three standard element or section containers. Um, and in the first container at the top, I've just used a standard background. In the second container, I've used a um, background overlay. And in the third container, I've actually used an image element. I want to show you the differences that these give you and some of the pros and cons. So if we look at the scratch page here, so the first section up here, all I've done is gone into my background and selected the image. Now with this, I can change the background position, attachment, repeat the size, generally I'll need to set them to cover. You can set some scrolling effects and mouse effects on those, but you can't do anything with that background image as far as its style. You can't change any of its CSS properties, you can't uh, you know, change its opacity, um, you can't really do anything apart from the basics here. But what you can do is when you change to different responsive modes, so I go to tablet, I can select a different image for my tablet, different image for my mobile, so you can do that, but that's about the limit of what you can do. Um, I can't even select an image size, a WordPress image size, so this is a very large image, and I'm only using it in a column, for example, it's going to use the full size image. And that's it. So it's not good for SEO, uh, not good for performance. So the second option here is that I don't use a background at all. I use the background overlay. Now, the background overlay, exactly the same as far as setting the background. The difference is, we get an opacity, so if I've got something in the background of the page or this is sitting on top of something else, I can change its opacity. I can also set filters uh, so I can change its blur, make it super blurred or not very blurred. Uh, what happened there? Uh, change my saturation to be really saturated, only having a very slight amount of color. And increase the contrast, decrease the contrast, whatever I want. You can use all these CSS filters um, and Generally, if you set the opacity to one, it looks and behaves pretty much the same as a standard background, but you get all these additional options of what you can do with it, even the blend mode, CSS blend mode. And I think it's actually better. Now, the only time I would say it's not better is if you've got a background image and then you want another one sitting on top of it that you want to blend. But if you just want a background image, I think you're better off using the background overlay, not the background image not the standard background, I should say. <clears throat> now, before I move on, uh, what I want to show you is something else is to do with the CSS, uh, sorry, the HTML list generates. So if we look at the first container, so there's our container. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this Chrome DevTools. See what I'm talking about? So here's our first container, and you can see that what it's actually doing is setting a background with CSS on that element, which I'll explain is not the best for SEO. All right, if we look at the background overlay, what that's doing is it's creating a um, before pseudo element and then it's setting a CSS background on that pseudo element. Okay, so what we're going to get is the full size image regardless of what our page width is. Um, we're going to get the full size image from that CSS um, unless we change it responsibly. Um, and on smaller screen sizes, it's going to download larger images than what we actually need. Okay, so both of those options, so whether it's a standard background or a background overlay using CSS to give us the, uh, to load the image. So here's a third option. 
So it's probably a little bit harder to see, but in this section here, I'm not using any backgrounds at all. I'm not using any of the background settings here. What I've done is I've added an image element. So basically dragged and dropped a uh, image as the first element on this page, oh, sorry, in the section. So I put an image in there, um, select my image that I want. So here's the first thing that is better. You can actually select the WordPress size you want. So depending on if you want to reduce your size and really the quality doesn't matter to get stuff, then I might select the 768 or the 300. It's all blurred there now. But as a background, that might be okay. It's going to give me a much smaller file size. So I'm going to go back to the 1500 wide. Um, so that's the first benefit of it. Okay, now if you just drag an image and stick it into the uh, there, it's not going to work. Properly. I'm going to just take a class off and show what I mean. So if I take this class off, I've just got an image element inside that section. I've created a class here called pseudo background. Okay. And for the moment, I've just put the CSS for this on that actual image. And what my pseudo background is doing, let me zoom, see, I'm jumping all over the place as I scroll here. Um, so what I'm doing with my pseudo background, I'm setting my position of my image to absolute, setting the width to 100%, and setting inset to zero. Inset means it's the same as doing top, left, bottom and right, all set to zero. This is a shorthand way of doing that. Now, in Elementor, when you add a widget, that's the widget wrapper that we're looking at. It's actually a targeting, not the actual image element. I'll show you that in the HTML. So then what we're gonna do is, for that class, we're gonna target the image itself, set its height and width to 100%, and we're gonna set its object fit to cover. Let me show you what happens if we don't. Um, it's going to comment out the object cover. You can see here that image is all squashed now. So when we set the width and height of an image to be different to what its actual ratio is, it just squashes the image. But the CSS3 property here of object fit cover treats it the same way as the size cover does for a CSS background. So it actually fits it into the space. It scales to fit the space. So this works exactly the same as it would for a CSS background um, as far as the way it scales to fill the space. So when we're looking at these, they pretty much look like the same thing. Different images, but the same effect. All of these have an image in the background which has the size set to cover so it'll scale to fill the space. So why do I prefer the last method? If we look at the HTML for it. So with the top one, the first one, it just set a CSS background on that div. With the overlay, it set a CSS background on the before pseudo element. With adding an image, it actually adds an image widget to the page. There's the widget container, and there's my actual image widget. And what you'll see here, I don't think you can see that very well, I'm just gonna get some of this out of the way, is it's a standard HTML image. So here's all the benefits of it. Firstly, I haven't set one here, but if we did, you're not tagged. So for SEO, you can actually describe this image, which helps with your SEO. It's got lazy loading. So if there's a bunch of these, it's a section not on the first page, on the second, third page of scrolling, um, it's good for performance because this is not going to load when the DOM is ready. It's going to load when that element is coming into view with lazy loading. So you're lazy loading these images rather than loading them as the page renders. So that's the second benefit. The third benefit is the source set. So you get a standard source set. So depending on the width of your screen, it's going to load images of different sizes. 
So down here, for example, if we've got, let's look at the source set here. I'm going to pick one in the middle somewhere. So when the screen is only uh, 300 wide, we're only going to get the 300 wide version of this image. Okay. When the screen is 1024 wide, we're going to get the 1024 wide version of this image. So from an SEO perspective, it's only loading the image as big as it needs to be to fit that screen width. So the big benefits, A, an alt tag on your image to describe your background. B, lazy loading of your image. C, your source set. So you're going to get different image sizes automatically depending on the width of the screen. So I really like this idea. Um, I'm interested to find out what you guys think. Um, so what I would do is a bit of a poll as to, and I know this is going to vary depending on design, but what is your thing? What are your thoughts? The best way is it just setting a straight background image? Is it setting a um, a background overlay that just gives us more control over that image and how that looks? Or are we better off putting a actual image um, element on the page and using some styles to make it look like and work like a background image? By the way, one thing I missed on the image, um, you also get the CSS filters as well. So the same as your background overlay. So I can change the saturation on that image to be um, virtually monochrome or just a slight bit of color. I can really oversaturate it if I want. Um, you know, if I want to blur that background, I can just blur it. So it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Now, I'd love to hear what you think. So I'll end this here. I might do this as a poll and get your feedback as to which ways you think are the better way of doing this. Um, the image is probably a little bit more work, but it's not much more. Um, and I should probably, I know I keep going on this, but what I would probably do is take that CSS that I created on the custom CSS here. I would take it out of there, I would cut it out of there. I go to my site settings or your code manager, whatever you use to manage your CSS globally. Um, I would go in there, custom CSS chuck it into your site settings and then you can use it on any image anywhere. So all you have to do in a section is add an image as the first element in that section, add the pseudo background class to that um, image and it'll work as a background and then you've got all the control over that and all the SEO benefits of it as well. Anyway, I'm going to end this here. If you like this, please hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you.